My name's Matt, and thanks so much for joining us today for another TOTO community webinar. Um, in today's webinar, we're going to go behind the scenes on West College Scotland's TOTO site. Um, and to help us do that today, we're joined by Paul Ferguson, the Organisational and Development Manager at West College Scotland. Hi, Paul. Hello. <laughs> um, oh. Hi, Paul. Um, we're also joined on the call today by Kira Regan, um, who's the Client Relationship Manager at Think Learning. Hi, Kira. Hello. Thanks very much. Um, so I think we might also be joined in the chat today by Jeremy, um, who will be able to answer some questions um, in the chat. So hi, Jeremy, in the chat. Um, he's also from Think Learning as well. So if you don't know about Totara, let me just um, I'll go through a little bit of the slides here. So this session is being recorded um, and it'll be available in the Totara community afterwards. So don't worry about writing everything down. You'll be able to watch the recording and share the slides um, with people afterwards as well. Um, if you've not already joined the Totara community, it's a free place where you can come, you can share ideas and you can collaborate with people all over the world trying to do probably similar things to you. Um, there's also a free academy in there with lots of training and resources available to help you understand more about your Totara site. Um, if you've just stumbled upon this webinar today or you're watching the recording and you're not aware of Totara, um, Totara develops um, talent development software uh, and you can learn more about the, uh, the different um, options available on totara.com. So just as a starting point today, Paul, would you mind just giving us a little introduction to yourself and sort of like what your day-to-day -day job looks like? Yeah, absolutely. Um, hi, everyone. Um, as you know, I'm Paul Ferguson, Organisational Development Manager at West College Scotland. Um, I am responsible for projects, uh, change and learning and development at West College Scotland. Um, one minute I can be working on a transformational project that's going to affect um, all of our staff, all of our students, um, or it might be focusing on learning and development interventions that will upskill, reskill um, and invest in, in our staff within the college. Thanks so much, Paul. And uh, Kira, would you mind just saying hello and letting us know about your role as well? Yeah, so I'm one of three client relationship managers at Think. So my role is really to work quite closely with a wide variety of clients, uh, making sure that they're getting the best out of the system and just being that main point of contact, really. And I've been working with Paul, I think, for coming up to two years now. Um, so, yeah, it's been it's been really, really good. It's been really nice to see the, the site grow and, grow and develop. Great, thanks so much. Okay, so just as a starting point, Paul, would you mind giving us a bit of an introduction as to West College Scotland, um, who do you train and what does the college do really? Yeah, absolutely. So West College Scotland um, is um, a further education institute in Scotland. Um, we have got 1,200 staff there or thereabouts, um, and we have got um, a headcount of about 21,500 students. Um, that's both students that are maybe part-time, full-time, um, online, um, coming onto campus. Um, but with that size, it makes us one of the biggest educational institutes in Scotland. In fact, our um, reach um, goes um, from all the way to up to Oban um, to just outside Glasgow. So we cover quite a large geographical area um, with a number of local authorities within that area as well. Um, we are 10 years old this year. Uh, we were founded back in 2013 through the merger of, of three different legacy colleges. Um, and we play a key role in local communities, providing courses to more than 3,000 senior phase um, pupils as well. So that could be foundation apprenticeships or taster courses. So working very closely with schools and local authorities. We also provide training for a huge range of, of business partners from small and medium enterprises. Um, and some of, some of them could be really small in our local communities, but others could be big players in the world stage as well. We've got a massive range of, of courses. Um, when you walk down our corridors, you're in um, a beauty salon one minute and in, in hairdressing, makeup artistry. Um, and then you go downstairs and you're in a construction site and in, in engineering. Um, really versatile, lots of things going on um, that's very hands-on. And then in other areas, really academic in terms of, of business and accounting, uh, accountancy as well. As I said, you know, we've got full-time, part-time, evening, online learning. We pride ourselves on being agile and adaptive and digital. So making sure that we are where our students are and designing them to be able to get a job, keep a job, or to um, advance in their career as well. Great, thanks, Paul. And when you, when you joined the college, when was that? 
Uh, I joined two years ago um, and the first thing that I was asked to do uh, was to look at the process for conversations between managers and their teams that were almost non-existent. Uh, there was no self-directed learning within the college at the time and CPD was um, a request that you could put in or it was a case of, yeah, we'll just put people on this course or, or that course. So the landscape um, was not what it should be for an educational institute. Okay, and um, we're going to dig into today the challenge into more detail. I'm also going to look a lot at the solution today. Um, so as part of your solution, you decided to um, use Totoro as a starting point. And what made you choose Totoro? Uh, I had used Totara in a previous organisation and one of the things that always kind of drew, drew me to Totara was the fact of its versatility and its adaptability. So depend, it doesn't matter what the challenge is, you're, you can always find a way of adapting Totara to, to the needs of your own specific organisation. So though there was a lot of similarities in the, the two platforms or solutions that I ended up with in two different organisations, they were very much different and tailored to the needs of that particular organisation. Um, so I did do um, benchmarking right at the beginning to understand what our requirements were um, to make sure that I wasn't just shoehorning it into to Totara, but Totara, again, came up top trumps in terms of being able to offer us the solution. Okay, brilliant. And you also decided to work with Platinum Partner, Think Learning. What was it about Think that you decided to, to work with them? It was the small organisational feel that we got from, from Think and that the the customer centric um of of what they what they were offering um in many of the conversations that we had with think it was very much about what is best for west college scotland they had a huge understanding of the public sector um through their work with nhs trusts and how you know something is is as particular as language just has to be right um so that was one of the things that that drew um but we did go through a, a procurement exercise um and um think um came up top both in quality and in price Brilliant, thanks, Paul. And um, Kate, if you want to just give us a little bit of an explanation as to as to what Think does in, in more detail. Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, if you're not familiar with Think, we are Totra's Global Partner of the Year 2023, um, which we like to mention as often as possible. Um, so yeah, what we do, we support a wide range of clients from hospitality to private healthcare, education, um, and as Paul mentioned, we pride ourselves working quite a lot with a number of NHS trusts as well. Um, so using Totra's code base for learn, perform and engage, we deliver the full TXP service. Um, but then what we try and do is build upon that with bespoke plugins around possibly uh, mentoring, workflows, uh, 360 feedback and e-commerce, uh, quite a lot more as well. But yeah, we try and sort of deliver as a bespoke solution as much as possible. So we'll have a client working with one of our consultants on a one-to-one -one basis to really uncover what it is that they need for their organization. And then we'll deliver a bespoke solution from that. Um, I think we've got, yeah, so we've got some stats here, just sort of highlighting that there's increased learning engagement improvement across our NHS client base, a huge increase in compliance against circle healthcare. Um, so yeah, that's kind of us in a nutshell. <coughs> I can hand back to Paul to sort of share what we've done to deliver Evolve. Yeah, thanks, Garrett. And also on that one there, you've got like the 1,800% increase in compliance on the Circle Health Group. If you are interested in learning more about that case study in particular, um, there is a webinar on the Totoro community um, showcasing mm. Circle Health Group's um, work with Think and um, with Totoro. So you can go and check that one out as well. Okay, um, so let's take a closer look, um, Paul. So you've had lots of success with the platform in the, in the last two years. And just as a starting point, if you have a quick look at some of the impact that you've made. I think you've gone on mute, Paul. Yeah, so, so absolutely. In, in terms of the, the the impact, so similarly with, with compliance, we've seen a 30% increase in compliance. We were around 60% um, in terms of our managing compliance learning, and we're now at 90%. Um, and we are looking for that 100% compliant, um, and we are edging ever closer to that. 
in terms of uh, CPD hours, we look at it both in terms of the CPD that they do on the platform, but then seeing learning as being so much more than that. So if they go to a conference or a TED talk, something that's not necessarily through our platform, then they can also add that on. And that kind of it goes towards their total CPD hours of, of um, six days of CPD is what we um, offer. What we found um, with the increase in CPD hours is that we've managed to, if we take out the additional learning, but just in the Evolve learning alone, we would have required six times our budget to deliver what we have delivered this uh, in the last year, um, just through the implementation of having self-directed learning on, on a really accessible platform. Um, so big success story there. Um, and my conversations is the approach that we have to to one-to-ones. And we've seen about a 10% increase on what our approach was previously with, with conversations. Um, that um, I'll talk more about kind of lessons learned later on in the webinar but that's one area that, that we are looking at in terms of how we how we can improve that. We use stats all the time to, to understand how our platform is working and, and who's engaging with, with what. And one of the things that we do use um, at loads of different levels is the top 10 engagement, which you can see on the screen just now, to understand what are the kinds of learning that people are engaging with um, at what times in the year, to understand if we can see trends but also helps us to understand what more learning we can put in a particular space. So if we see that there's um, a theme for um, health and well-being among staff, then that's an area that we can invest in. Brilliant, thanks, Paul. So I think what we'll do now um, is let's have a jump into um, your platform, if that's all right, yeah, and maybe course. go behind the scenes and uh, you can showcase this uh, in a lot more detail. So that my conversation is particularly interesting as well. I can't wait to have a look at some of these things. That was a very seamless, Paul. <laughs> uh, welcome to Evolve. So this is the West College Scotland platform um, built on Totara. At the moment, we utilise Totara Learn and Totara Perform um, for different parts of, of the system. And what I've just come on to is, is, is our landing page. Um, one of the things that um, our staff told us when we were designing what our kind of learning ecosystem would look at um, is the fact that they had things all over the place. So there's um, information on learning and development on the staff internet page. Um, in terms of one-to-ones with managers, there was a, a SharePoint um, page that someone went on to and recorded things on. Um, and mandatory learning sat um, on a middle page as part of our student system. So there was things in, in different places. So what we wanted to do was to bring all that together to make the learner journey much easier. So on the home page, as you can see down the bottom, we've utilized um, what we call our, our learner journal areas. So anything that would normally sit on an internet page, we've taken that off the internet and moved it on to the Evolve platform. So all of the, the information that anyone could ever need about learning and development is sitting within the Evolve platform. So they don't have to go to different places and that's organized depending on what it is that they're looking at. My conversation's really important for everyone so that gets its own journey. All of the guides that someone needs depending on the kinds of conversation that they, they are having or if they're a manager or the, type of year, or the time of year it is, that all sits within the My Conversations journey. If you're a new member of staff, all the induction material is, is under the I'm new returning. And then depending on whether you're a team member or a manager, all the information you need is sitting on the homepage for you then to, to go to and, and dip in and out with, with all the information that, that you need. Just up the top here, uh, we've got our global navigation of all the different functionality that we have. Um, we're also advertising um, our strategic learning just now. So all of the different themes that we have for strategic learning is advertised on the homepage. And behind that, that will take them into those categories of learning to, to go through. So that's our priorities that we are focusing on as an organization for, for learning and making that really stand out as soon as someone comes on to the platform. My conversations, um, as I said, that, that approach to one-to-ones, to -one for us, the most important thing is that conversations are happening. And so we wanted to make sure that the that staff had the ability to go and record those conversations, but it's it wasn't to be um, too clunky. It was to be something they could access at any time. My conversations is 
continuous. So though we might say there's a start, there's a mid and an end, yes, there is, because in order to set goals and to be realistic, then you need to have an end in mind. But for us, conver the conversation cycle is always open. So unlike traditional appraisals, where you have a very clear start and a very clear end, for us, you, you pick it up at, at any time. So we had to design something with uh, Think that would meet that requirement for us. So we have used um, a Think product called Workflows to build my conversations on. So if I just go into my conversations and then I click on record new conversation, this brings up um, the ability then to go into to, to the workflow. And what we wanted to do, as I said, to make something really simple, really easy to use. So we know that people are going to set goals and in true blue, blue Peter fashion, there's some goals that you can see. We knew that people were going to have conversations, but we wanted it to be as simple as clicking, add a new goal, what kind of goal is it? What's the goal title and what's the requirements? When are you going to do that by? And then have the ability for that psychological, yep, that's done, to go back in and say, yes, I've completed on that goal. Similarly with, with conversations, um, the SharePoint form that we had originally had about 15 different boxes that someone would, would fill in. It was all different colours. It would then go to a manager and then go to a manager's manager and there would be a different workflow that would be in there. We said, no, all we need is that they have the confidence that they're having a really good conversation. An individual will come in here, they'll say when they had the conversation, the kind of conversation that they're having, and then they put their notes in. If they're the kind of person that likes to write war and peace, then they can put war and peace in there. If they want to just keep a couple of actions that make sense between the, the, um, the individual and their manager, then they can do that too. Um, but keeping it really simple because the only people who are going to look at the conversation is the individual and their manager. And then the last thing that we wanted was the ability for the manager to, um, um, to respond. Now in traditional appraisal there would be a manager saying yes we, we've had this conversation and kind of ending it with a manager approval for us it's open this is for the individual to record the individual leads on the conversation the manager may have a comment they might want to ha give them recognition they might want to give them feedback or they might want to just add something in that they missed in that conversation we've given the manager ability to do that without it feeling like um, it's a, um, it goes to the manager for approval. It's to be natural to the, in, in, in a conversation and just keeping it really simple and really straightforward. That's great. Thanks so much, Paul. It's a really interesting approach. Um, and also, you, you sort of combined um, Toto Learn and Toto Perform together. And how have you taken the approach to combine those two? So what um, Totara Perform gives us is the ability to do skills profiles. So on Totara Perform, um, there is competencies. Competencies didn't really work in terms of language for our organization, but what people did talk about were skills and professional standards. So what we decided to do is using the, the language customization um, string is just to change the language to be able to, to suit us. So within the My Conversations approach, we have asked people to think about what goes into a My Conversation. And one of the things that could go into a My Conversation is their skills profile. So we have got four um, skills profiles set, our framework set up. One is, is meta skills, which are in, in other names, uh, we call them future skills, we call them skills for the future, we call it industry 4.0. So what, whatever terminology you're using for, for those skills, we use meta skills. So everyone in the organization has meta skills assigned to them through um, a dynamic audience. We also have professional standards for managers and leaders. That was developed through the Chartered Management Institute. For us, there is no point reinventing the wheel when it comes to skills profiles and frameworks. They are already globally recognized frameworks out there. So we are just taking those in-house. So the CMI, Professional Standards for Managers and Leaders, is then assigned again by dynamic audience to all managers and leaders within the organization. The last two um, are the professional standards for lecturers, which is assigned through the General Teaching Council of Scotland. And the fourth one is the um, AUA, which is um, administrating of, of university um, administrators. 
And that is for anyone who doesn't have a framework. So I sit within the HR team. I have a framework, it's CIPD, and I'm encouraged then to utilise that. But not all professions within the college have a framework. So we have borrowed that um, generic framework from the EUA. And again, that can be assigned. So what this gives me is the ability to look at the skills and standards that have been assigned to me. I can also look at other skills or standards that have not been assigned to them. And I can assign them to myself if I want. But just sticking with the the two that I've been assigned here, I've got meta skills and I've got professional standards for, for managers and leaders. The the um the competencies is out, out of the box um totara. It's it's what we use, but where the change in the partnership we think has come is in the graphical representation that you can see that's just a bit of bespoke work that was done um with, with Think just to make the user interface um a bit better when, when you appear here. Um, But what I can see here is uh, personal effectiveness, organisational performance and interpersonal excellence. They're the parent skill or standard. And I can see at a quick glance where my achievement and my proficiency level within that skills framework is. And I can see right away that I'm almost, uh, almost if not fully developed in personal effectiveness. I've got a bit of work to do in interpersonal excellence, but where I've got the most development is in organisational performance. So when I click into children, I can see what's actually sitting underneath that particular skill or standard and where I have to focus my energy in. I can also see my historic level of of achievement. So I can see my distance traveled. So when I'm having a conversation with my manager, I can say, actually, I've been doing a lot of work on achieving results. Um, I've gone from uh, from one area of development to another, and this is how I've done that. It then gives me more intelligence to to have that that deeper conversation. But I can see that I've still got a bit of work to do on managing resources and risks. So if I click into managing resources and risk, I get a bit more understanding through this blurb about what managing resources and risk actually means. How will I know that that I'm getting better at that particular skill or standard? And I've then got this graphic that shows me where I am on my development journey. So we decided to go with a 10 point scale of development with one being needs development, 10 being fully developed and zero being actually I don't require to be proficient in this particular skill. The reason we decided to do that was because skills are um, depending on what role that you're in. So right now I'm in a manager role within the organization. If I then advance in my career, my skill set will may stay the same, but maybe at a different level. So although I'm a nine right now as a manager, I have to rethink that and maybe go back down to to a six. So that's why we decided to, to go with the scale that we did. I can scroll down further and see recommended learning. So we have mapped all of the learning on Total to Learn that we have to um, each particular skill or standard, which means if you do have a development in an area, then you know what learning you need to do in order to be um, more proficient in that area. If someone completes all the learning attached to that particular skill or standard, they will appear as being 10 as as fully developed. But with a caveat that if we add more learning, then they will drop back down to a nine to to complete that learning. And then the other thing they can do is self-assess themselves. So at the moment with um, this, we've only switched on self-assessment. You can add manager assessment, but we've decided not to do that at the moment. It's something we may look at in future. So I can then say, yep, I'm a nine just now, but maybe I want to go in now and say, well, I've done development, I've done experiential learning, um, I've had mentoring or coaching, whatever that might be. Uh, I'm now happy that I'm a 10 and I'm fully developed in that area and I can add a comment to, to that effect. When I do that, then it will update onto to my skills profile. So now I can then go into that conversation with my manager to say, here's the learning that I said I was going to do, and here's the learning that I've done, and this is what my skills profile now looks like. Thanks. Well, it's quite interesting to think about um, the way that you can go backwards on your scale as well. So, for example, um, let's say you had, like, I don't know, digital skills, for example, maybe maybe you felt before a year and a half ago that, you know, the top of doing really well digital skills and all of a sudden like AI comes out and changes the world and then have to go back down the scale again. So, you know, the skills are not something that are complete in a way that they're evolving almost like your platform. Yep. 
Yeah, definitely. And what we found as well was that we started going down a line of, do we have levels? So are you, you know, beginner, advanced, coach, leader? But what people tended to do was to associate those with a role. So if you are a leader in a skill, then there's the expectation that you should be a leader in an organization. That's not always the case because you can be an expert in something without having the the, the leader title, as it were. And as you've just said, Matt, um, you don't know what you don't know. So you could be really proficient in something and then something happens and you're like, oh, maybe I didn't know as much as I knew in that or a new experience happens. So you have to have that ability to take a step back and go, yeah, maybe I'm not as fully developed in that area as what I thought I was. Yeah, thanks. And one of the things you were showing, Paul, was at the top of this page was um, just the sort of percentage that people yeah. were through their skills. And, and how do they progress um, at being more proficient on those um, skills? So the, the, more, the more tens that you have in terms of being fully developed, the more that that, that radar will, will go around to being to being 100%. Um, if I see you know a skills profile with uh, all four frameworks as being 100%, then that's maybe another conversation that a manager has to, to say because you know we're not all the finished article. There is always more that, that we can learn, um, but that just gives you an indication of within a particular framework as well. So, for example, looking at that, I need to do more work on my meta skills than I do my professional standards for managers and leaders. It just gives you that that insight just as, as soon as you land on this page. Yeah, thanks, Paul. I'm very hopeful that I am not the finished article. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, we're just thinking about like um, something that we've, we've talked about before as well as continued professional development and the number of hours that um, tutors uh, had completed and, and how that was tracked. And I wonder if yeah. you could share a little bit about how that was being tracked before and, and the, some of the changes that you've, you've yeah, made on, on absolutely. the organization. Um, so if I just pop into to my learning, which is the um, compliance and mandatory and the, and the learning record, and unless I was 100%, I was not showing this screen. I'm so pleased to say that I am 100%. Um, so before, Matt, it wasn't um, recorded at all. So we, we had no idea or, uh, or understanding of how many hours of CPD people have actually completed. We had an understanding through if people had been on um, a course with us that we had put them on then we could you know assign an, an arbitrary number to, to each person but that didn't tell us about anything they were doing in their own time it didn't tell us about anything that they you know if they were watching a TED talk or if they were reading an article or, or a book or, or those kind of things that are still learning so what we wanted to understand was that whole array of what learning is but to get people to think differently about what learning is too, because learning is not just going on a course, it's having an experience, it's watching a video, it's what you do with it there, thereafter. So what we wanted to do was have the ability to record both. So within the learning record, um, we have got um, the, the current academic year, we've got bookings and, and so on and so forth. So that's anything that someone completes on uh, Evolve uh, is tracked. And anything that we have on Evolve, we have assigned a custom field to for CPD hours. So that so anyone with a tool to the platform, you can do that too. You can add a custom field um, and that allows you then to report on how many hours that, that takes. So if something is seven hours, it gets seven CPD hours assigned to it. So that's what we've done for everything that is, is on Evolve. Then using the evidence, we have got something called additional learning. So anything that you complete out with of the Evolve platform. So you can see here, um, there's a professional qualification there. That's not something you would complete through the platform. That's external to the platform, but you still want to have a record of it and you still want it to contribute towards your CPD hours. So with, a, with partnership with Think, we found a way of being able to combine the CPD hours in that custom field and see CPD hours in the custom field of the, the evidence together to give a total CPD hours. So you can see here um, what this, this demo site is showing you is 17.1 hours. So I now know how many CPD hours, both from additional, but then also from, from anything that's been completed on, on, on learning. 
and having it all in one place. So when we started our journey, um, it hadn't been so long since um, lecturers then fell under the General Teaching Council of Scotland. And there are some requirements they have to do on uh, every seven years to show evidence of the learning that they've undertaken and also the professional dialogue that they had uh, with their managers. So we had to make sure the platform that we designed was helping towards those those requirements. So now our lecturing staff every seven years only have to come into their learning record and export it as, as a CV, uh, CSV file and upload it onto the GTC website. It takes all of that, oh, what, what did I do five years ago, two years ago? How many hours does that equate to? So taking all of that heavy lifting away from our staff and getting it done automatically for them um, saves so much time for them when they're doing those um, evidence checks. And that goes for, for any professional bodies because a lot of professional bodies ask for, for similar too. So making sure that the platform was speaking to other platforms. And do you feel, I suppose, in, in, in education in general, there's, there's a big um, element of reflection, which is quite important when you're thinking about um, yeah. whether or not you've developed it. And do you feel like um, allowing the tutors to reflect on their CPD hours means they're actually spending more time doing more training and, and, and thinking more now that they can see the number of hours they've actually done? Yeah, definitely. And what we've we've added into to the evidence as well, I've just clicked into that to add additional learning. So as well as telling us, you know, what it is and how many CPD hours that they have, um, we've got a space for learning reflection as well. So that it's not just, you know, I, I went on this, but why did you go into it? How are you going to add that into to your practice and having that reflective practice as, as part of it? So, yeah, you've done the learning. So what? What, what you're going to do about it and how are you then going to embed that into to your practice and the other thing that we've added in is a link to professional standards so making sure that all different parts of our site are, are speaking to each other so they've gone and they've they've completed the professional standards for lecturers so if it's a lecturing member of staff um how does that relate to the professional standards for lecturers and, and what you've done there so just making sure that they can see that link between everything that they're doing in terms of learning and development Great, thanks, Paul. And sort of anecdotally or evidence-based, are you having any impact or feedback from from people in the organisation in the organisation saying how this is affecting them? So we had one member of staff who um, has who did their their evidence for um, the GTC last year, and that's been the first time that they've actually been able to go on and just pull things and then put out because they've been a member of GTC before it became a requirement for for lecturers. Um, and they talked about how easy it was um, to go through that process of just taking everything off of Evolve and putting it straight onto to the GTC evidence. Um, they found it seamless and it was so good that there was now something in place that allowed them to, to do that and to, to get that evidence. And other members of staff um, have just talked about how easy it is to find everything in one place and being able to just have that, oh, that will be on Evolve and not have to worry about what area of the internet that it will be on or, or where they're able to find that that having a one-stop shop for all of their learning and development needs has, has been great for them thanks paul and is there anything else you'd like to highlight to the community today or any other areas of the platform that you're so proud of one of the things i'll just um or two things i'll just um quickly show you is is in terms of fine learning we've also made use of, of custom fields again in terms of the duration of, of the learning one of the biggest things that our learners will tell us is that they don't have time for learning um so my reply now is have you got five minutes Yes. Okay. Well, if you go on to find learning and click on less than five minutes, that will show you all of the learning that's on the platform that takes less than five minutes to to complete. Um, you've got fifteen minutes. Even better. You know, you can you can look at that as well. So, using custom fields within your find learning gives almost that kind of e-commerce feel that people are already used to in terms of browsing. You know, if you're you're shopping or any this size of, of shoe or this color, um, then the the find learning experience is exactly the same as that. So seeing that the learning is personalized to them so that they can find the, the learning in the time that they have um, or you know I'm just going to make some space for me and for my learning then they can they can go ahead and, and do that so that's just one thing just to, to highlight to everyone on the the webinar and then the other thing is really just to say that I mentioned earlier about the ability to to share um, the, the stats and, and use stats to for, for engagement. So we've created dashboards that will allow us 
to to have that conversation with um, leaders, with managers, but giving them the tools to be able to use stats to benefit them as well. So we've created um, dashboards, which I'll just quickly show you. So the dashboards that we have created, we have them at uh, an organisational level, but then it drills down to every manager can see this for their area all the way down to, um, to frontline staff. So it allows them to see at a glance all of their stats and to use that then and inform them to, to make decisions. So this is just a, a mock-up of the organisational one. Um, if a manager was to go in um, for their frontline staff, they would only see the information that's available to them. So we've built these dashboards along lines of um, learning and compliance so that they can see how compliant their teams are and the CPD hours that they have within their team. But then we also have got um, a skills one as well, which delves into the skills profiles a bit deeper as well. Great, thanks. And do, you th and do you think people are talking more about skills and using that particular language a lot more in the organisation as a result of, of the platform? Yeah, definitely. We, we've got different themes that we have every couple of months, which is driven both by our quality team, but also by the OD team as well, to, to have a focus on different skills and different standards that we might have. Um, and the fact that um, we are talking about, when we were talking about strategic learning earlier on, when I was saying we advertise that on the, on the homepage, um, we are now getting a pull from the business to talk about upskilling and reskilling and how we do that. And the intelligence that they're using um, is through the, the skill standards as well. So they're asking for more frameworks because they've seen how useful the professional standards are. Um, so looking at it from, from an industry perspective as well. So um, many of our, our, all of our lecturers are dual trained because they will be teachers but then they're also coming from from industry as well so understanding that versatility across the board and how we can use skills um to be really agile and responsive as an organization yeah thanks paul so taking a really reflective structured and sort of measured approach to skills development it's great to see i mean it's a really great platform um and in the sort of like coming years or months is there anything that your people are asking for or the things you'd like to add to the platform or to develop next yeah, absolutely. So we have just started um, a project to introduce Tota Engage onto the platform now as well. Um, so that is a direct ask from from the business. Um, they've been we've been wanting to have communities of practice for for so long, um, without actually the the logistics um, behind it to be able to do that, and also to to share learning. Um, so it goes back into that upskilling and reskilling, but then also um, aging workforces as well. You don't want to, to lose, the, lose the knowledge. So with Totara Engage, we're going to introduce My Knowledge Verse, which is the ability for user-generated learning and to, to share that. Um, and then also with communities of practice um, through workspaces on Engage too. What, what type of resources do you expect people to share? And I like the name of it, My Knowledge Verse. That sounds like a great, um, great name. Um, so we expect that um, if someone goes on uh, an external CPD course, um, they might go to, so um, recently we had uh, some of our beauty lecturers went to, to a conference on makeup artistry. They may share their learning from, from that with the, with the wider team. So the one person gets to go to the conference, the whole team benefits then from that learning. Um, or it might be the manager of a team has uh, been doing some reflection or some learning maybe they've watched a TED talk and they wanted to then share it with, with the rest of their team or with the rest of the organisation, then they now have the ability to be able to do that. Okay, well, we'd love to come back and uh, have a look again when once that's set up. That'd be great to see. Um, okay, and Kira, is there anything else that you'd like to highlight about the platform that has been, you've been enjoying working with Paul on that you've been happy to see? Um, I think it's just Paul and the team have just really utilised all of the functionality possible really um i really like the way that you manage the language so you've made it completely bespoke to your own organization so that helps when you're implementing a new system that it's more familiar with the language that they're aware of um so yeah that's something that i think is it's small but it's, it has such a big impact um as well as just the design so the design is really well thought through throughout the whole platform um, so yeah, they're definitely my, my highlights. 
Yeah, great. It looks really easy to navigate as well as, yeah. as a user. When you come into the platform, you know where you're going straight away, don't you? You're not confused. Yeah, and you're not overwhelmed. There's not, you know, hundreds and hundreds of choices. You kind of just know what you need to, to get to quite easily. Okay, great. Well, thanks so much, Kira. And Paul, is there anything else you'd like to sort of highlight or, or say bef before I move on to the next couple of slides? I don't think so. Well, that was a great demo. Thanks very much for taking us <laughs> behind the scenes there. I'll just mention um, the fact that if anyone is... Um, thinking about some of the features that, that Paul's just shown there. Um, you can go and have a look in the Data Academy. There's lots of different um, resources and courses available. There's uh, Engage resources and there's Data Learn resources. Um, the competency profile that Paul was showing, you can also take a look at that in the Data community. If you go to competencies, um, they are linked to Data Academy courses. So if you go into the Data Academy and learn something in the community, which is free to do, um, you can check out your competency profile and you can grow your Data knowledge in the Academy as well. Um, sorts of different types of courses, for example, if you're trying to build reports or do something different like create onboarding or compliance training as well. So just from today, um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to post those in the chat. You may also be watching this webinar um, on demand um, and you'll be doing that in Engage. So you can actually at tag Paul or Kira as well and you can ask any questions that you have after the webinar today um, if you're watching this in New Zealand, for example. So feel free to uh, post questions in here. Um, just to mention some upcoming events, we are doing um, a talent experience platform demonstration on the 25th of October. You're very welcome to come to that. Um, and then in a few weeks time, we'll be looking at from data to decisions. So we'll be talking all about analytics um, with our partner, Kinia, as well. Um, but thanks so much for your time today, uh, Kira and Paul. It's been great to go behind the scenes, uh, Paul. It's a, a great platform that you've built in, in collaboration with Think Learning. And yeah, congratulations, Kira, as well on being Global Partner of the Year. It's always good to mention that, like you said. Um, <laughs> yeah, thank you both for your time today. It's been great to have you both on the chat. Well, thank you. Thank you. And if anyone wants to contact you, Paul, is the best place on uh, just on the community or? Uh, on the community or on LinkedIn, I'm happy for people to, to add me on LinkedIn and have a chat on there. Great. Thanks so much. And uh, thanks very much, everyone who's come to the webinar today. Thanks a lot. And we'll, we'll finish there for today. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Kira.